Insulin receptors are located throughout the body, brain included. The more sensitive you are to the actions of insulin, the more insulin can do all the wonderful things that insulin can do. The form of foods greatly can alter the actions of insulin in the body. I kind of go about things a little bit differently in the sense of kind of how I talk. So I will talk kind of like you would hear just two friends having a conversation because in my world, that's what I'm used to having to do because I have to be able to relate to my clients. And this could be a 20 year old top draft pick who just got drafted by the NFL. And I'm trying to make a Bryce young understand why he had better get much bigger real quickly. True story. Or an individual who maybe um, is a CEO at a business, but at the end of the day, he just does not know anything remotely about nutrition. And I know those are the same type of situations that everybody comes up with a lot. It's when you're bringing in people from different walks of life and trying to explain why what you do is going to be impactful to them and or kind of alter their perception on things. So mine today is on insulin enhancement and manipulation for strength, performance, and cognitive acceleration. That last one is one of my favorites because that's often overlooked. When it comes to insulin, most people think food, diet, weight gain, weight loss, nutrient absorption, nutrient starvation, hence diabetic type 1, can't absorb anything, death by starvation. The cognitive impacts and the way that you can manipulate, especially with nootropics and things like that being such a, a buzz topic and something that people are really putting a lot of focus on. Insulin is like the totally left behind dark horse, if you will, on something that can have an incredibly profound impact on your cognitive performance and enhancing that and speeding that up. Insulin receptors are located throughout the body, brain included. The more sensitive you are to the actions of insulin, the more insulin can do all the wonderful things that insulin can do, which is turn loose all the things that you're pursuing in order to make yourself better. So whatever athletic pursuit you might have, be it a sport or be it an individual personal goal, it doesn't really matter what type of diet you pursue. It doesn't really matter what type of exercise you pursue. At the end of the day, your results are still going to come back down to how those activities influence the actions of insulin. And so what went on behind the scenes as a result to you moving the players around, so to speak, ultimately will determine the scope of your progress and of the impact. I'm probably most familiar with or people are most familiar with me from uh, World Strongest Man. I've been working on that show since 2009. So and every year since. So from 2009 to 2023s and uh, every single year I saw 15 years I've won seven titles. Four with Brian Shaw 2011, 13, 15, and 16. We were second in 2021, by the way, so almost five. 2021 and 22 to Tom Stoltman, and 2019 with Martins Lisi. During that time, Strongman went from big men just eating a lot of everything to big men who now understand that they need to take things a little bit more seriously and not just eat anything and everything and not the bigger that you are equals the stronger that you are. The sport, good and bad, it, there needs to be a balance with everything, has evolved in the sense that you have to be much more of an athlete today compared to many years. You have to be able to move. You have to be able to be strong. You have to, you have to be able to have endurance, both cardiovascular and muscular endurance. So it went from being a sport where nobody cared whatsoever about nutrition, especially when I first got involved. And, and I started telling guys to eat chicken and rice and was kind of mocked at for that, that eventually that has taken hold because of results from things like Brian and once he won 2011, and then things on progressed from there. In addition to the World Stars Man guys, I work with musicians. Johnny Hawkins, a singer for the band Nothing More, if you're familiar with them, they do arena tours. He's extremely lean and ripped, and he runs around for two hours like a madman. That's an individual who you're working with their nutrition because I'm solely a yes, physique based, but also for Johnny, he appreciates the attention that his physique gets, but it's still about the show that he can put on. So all he cares is that he can still sing and scream and run around nonstop for two hours. 
that's his goal. Whereas obviously with a strong man, it's a little bit different for models, actresses, actors, you kind of name it. I kind of work with it all, which is what ends up NFL guys, baseball guys. That's where it gets interesting because so many individuals and their not only their influences and their factors that are coming into play beyond their body types. So whether it's a hundred pound female or a 450 pound strongman, their lifestyle, their careers, their choices, all these things have an enormous impact on their insulin. So insulin, insulin basically being the key, the insulin receptors basically being like the door. So every time you eat anything, it's ingested, insulin goes to the receptors, unlocks the door, nutrients go in. If the receptors are not sensitive, insulin tries to unlock the door, key's not working. Key's not working, key's not working until about the 30th time it tries the door, then eventually the door cracks open a little bit. That's where you have the varying degrees of insulin sensitivity and the influences that that has. So whether you focus on your macros being limited in certain areas, being increased in certain areas, emit it, you know, Atkins diet, don't eat car. The type of exercise that you do, sleep increases, sleep decreases, hormone elevations, be it anabolic or catabolic, existing imbalances that you may have, which could be genetic or which could be lifestyle triggered because of the way that life has gone for the individual to that point. The total net impact in every single thing up here is at the core, it's all still dictated by the impacts on insulin release and insulin receptor sensitivity. That even goes down to things like how you receive medication. So you can have an elderly woman, if she's also not very sensitive to insulin, guess what? She's also not going to receive medication very well because insulin still being a storage hormone, still shuttling things about, it still has an influence on, and especially what's going on in the bloodstream, which we'll kind of get into later. When it comes to nutrition, problems that I have encountered, especially with individuals from all these different paths, are the focus on solely the item itself and not focusing on what, when you manipulate that form, what that does to the end result. Favorite example I like to give is a potato. So you can have a potato, six ounces. You can have six ounces of mashed potatoes. If you eat those items, they have completely different impacts on the body. Think of mashed potatoes as pre-digested. Our bodies are built where everything from head to toe has a job to do. When we start skipping levels or skipping middlemen or inserting middlemen in some cases, the body then begins to kind of wing it. And it no longer is doing as it's intended to be designed. And then the body being the incredibly, annoyingly, overly adaptive item that it is at times, starts to get itself off track, starts to adapt, starts to make the thing it's adapted to the new normal. And that's when individuals start to get off track, either with their health or with their goals or things like that. So with the potato example, food and just the forms that you ingest it are going to have that influence on the way that the body receives that nutrition, which is then going to have either a positive or a negative, and then that can branch off into timing, which is so important for me when it comes to enhancing the performance with that. So as you have six ounces of a whole potato and you begin the digestive process in the mouth, the body is getting that nice slow delivery of an item and everything goes in par. When you have mashed potatoes, Again, since it's sort of pre-digested, there's less to break down of it. With that, the digestive process still begins in the mouth, as it does with everything. However, the absorption rate dramatically accelerates. And uh, probably the horribly wrong place to make this example, say it's worth the Olympian, it's full of vendors out there. But a great example of this and where the wheels really go off the bus and where marketing plays an influence, but the marketing's not telling the story, is like with whey protein, You'll see a million examples of whey protein and what they're trying to market it is high hydrolyzed whey. You know, this is the fastest absorbing. As soon as you hear something like that, you should be out quickly because all you're about to do is buy a very expensive BCA product or maybe an EAA product. The body was never intended to receive protein to be utilized for tissue repair in an extremely rapid rate. The body is intended to receive protein, digest it, break it down to amino acids, carry it off to the tissues to do what it's supposed to do, tissue repair. When you have these hydrolyzed whey proteins, these extremely fast digesting proteins, 
I invite everyone to invest in a glucometer. Prick your finger, check your blood sugar after you have one of those products and watch your blood sugar level fly up like you ate gummy bears. Your body will convert that protein at about a 60% rate from as best as I can tell to glucose because it's coming in so fast it can't do anything with the aminos. Gluconeogenesis, here we go. Off it goes that way. So that's a very strong example of how the form of foods greatly can alter the actions of insulin in the body. And in a case like that, you're severely hampering the intended result of an item. In this case, protein can no longer do what it's designed for and it's certainly not doing what it's being marketed for, where you could just buy branched chain amino acids or essential amino acids. Years ago, one of the first strumman clients I had, he had a piss poor appetite. And so his approach that he had been doing on his own to get around that was, well, I just drink uh, amino acids all day long. That way I get my protein and I know I'm covered. And I'm like, come again? He goes, oh yeah, I take like four or five scoops. He goes, I'm probably taking 30, 40 grams of amino acids. But that's great, right? Because, you know, that's like a meal. He goes, I ate protein shakes. This stuff tastes like, you know, mango, peach or whatever. So it's really easy to ingest. I said, oh, I said, well, no, you're still not. You're still way behind on your protein needs. And he's like, how do you figure? I'm, I'm way ahead. You know, protein, what we want ultimately is branch chain amino acids. That's the powerhouse. And I'm cutting out the middleman and I'm getting the most important aspect of why I eat protein. And I'm getting it right there. I said, okay. So same thing. Got a glucometer, told him to check his blood sugar level after he had his wonderful little 40 gram BCA cocktail. Same thing, you know, he could eat a meal from McDonald's and his blood sugar level would go up to about 135. He could have his little BCA drink, his blood sugar level would go up to about 135 because he's converting at such a high rate because there's so much coming in so fast. It's never reaching the muscles. It's not doing the repair it's intended to do because... Ultimately, as with the moral of the story from where we began, it's the actions of insulin that will ultimately determine the results of the macros you put in your mouth, where they go and how they're going to go, be it how you intended or drastically not. The longer the receptor is exposed to circulating insulin, the less sensitive to insulin and its actions. So a reduction in nutrient delivery, kind of like that. A lot of people, the first thing they want to know is, well, that's great. I understand insulin's important. I just want to know how I can increase my sensitivity to insulin. Well, that's great, but there's no one answer to anybody as far as there's no one size fits all. Well, why is that? Well, there's no one size fits all. Well, I'm a twin. My sister and I look identical. We weigh the same. So what she does is going to work for me. We have the same genetics. We're really close. Yep, you do, but yet you're not. The reason why that doesn't apply is because all the other factors that, again, are going to influence the actions of insulin and play a very large role. Perhaps your sister works nights and you work days. It's going to have an impact on how you receive nutrition. Perhaps your sister is a, has a very stressful, stressful life. Everything comes at her all at once. Perhaps she doesn't deal with stress well. It's going to have a profound impact on insulin. So no two people have the same answer as far as like how to increase their sensitivity, no matter how genetically close they may actually be because of the constant external influences around that. The tricky thing here is with this, when you're trying to enhance performance to an athlete. So for myself, if I have an NFL guy and I'm trying to load him up for a game so that he can handle the first half as efficiently as possible and sustain that, I also have a second half. And so here's where it gets tricky. So you can have best laid plans of, bam, I'm going to pick him for the first half of a football game. I have the second half coming. The longer my client is exposed to higher levels of insulin, higher levels of blood sugar in his system, his insulin sensitivity is going to begin to tick down. So I've got him peaked for half of a game, but the problem is the peaking process, which loaded and saturated his glycogen levels, every single hard activity he does where he's having say, pushing off the line, using a lot of force onto another explosive run down the field, any of those contractions, if you will, are causing glycogen to be utilized and or spilled back out into the bloodstream. So we have higher levels of circulating blood glucose, which is also starting to make him a little bit less sensitive to the effects of insulin and pulling that back into the system 
to keep him topped off, if you will. So when it comes to halftime, it's not as simple as, we'll just give him what you did before the game. Can't really do that because he's less sensitive now to the effects of what we did at the beginning of the game. Plus, I now have a plethora of external factors also in play, influencing how he's going to receive his nutrition for the second half of the game. Is he beat up? If he took a shot and his hip is killing him, we've got cortisol release. We've got a lot of stressors and internal factors that are going on. Cortisol opposing the axis of insulin is going to interfere with insulin's ability to do its job. If they play outside and it's a hot day, another totally overlooked aspect when it comes to insulin is the effect of the sun on your blood sugar levels. A diabetic, say a type 1, so there's that genetic issue going on the devil is like a vampire of the devil the sun is like the devil or like daylight is to a vampire and that a diabetic type one can follow their diet perfectly as they are supposed to go outside to watch their child swim in a swim meet as they are as they are um, exposed to the sun the sun is very stressful to a diabetic because of the heat changes. When the body gets the heat changes on diabetics, they have a predisposition to have an extreme cortisol reaction to that too. It's very stressful. Their inflammation markers skyrocket as a result, and their blood sugar levels go up. So athletes do the same thing. If they're exposed to sun while they're active and all these other things go on, plus they take injuries or strains during the game, all these things, I now have a completely different athlete for the second half of a football game than I had as an athlete going into the first half of a football game. When that happens, the best thing that you can utilize is going to be work with that hormonal situation. So when cortisol levels are high, I have found through these years that I can use that by manipulating it to my advantage temporarily. So when you have a situation like this, we can even switch to the strongman guys, if you will. So if they have a hard event that they do, the last thing that I'll do is feed them the second that they're done with an event, anything to bring their blood sugar levels back up, I leave them alone. I let those levels naturally start to come back down on their own, let some of the cortisol levels start to come back on their own. But from that point on, if I can keep in mind that cortisol is opposing the actions of insulin, I can sustain and create kind of an artificial fake endurance level because of that enhanced glucose level. And then as we know through physical activity, increasing your sensitivity to the actions of insulin, once they are immediately highly active again, either doing the event or the lift in the case of strongman or in the NFL, once they're running up down the field again, that's then going to help to pull in that glucose again. So you can use that extended period of circulating blood sugar levels, even though technically you're in a reduced level of sensitivity. You can use that to prevent your client or your athlete from crashing. Well, a lot of individuals, the biggest thing that they have is as soon as they start to really exert themselves, and especially a surprising number of pro athletes, they start to get the low blood sugar crash or a little shaky and things like that are weak. If they actually utilize the timing of the cortisol being elevated and that artificial dome, if you will, they can actually use that to their advantage to avoid that crash, provided they allow that buffer and come back in with the nutrition with that delay. So that way, when they finally start to absorb back in and crash, there's already been food present. And so everything counterbalances. So if you're considering testosterone replacement therapy, TRT, why not reach out to one of our doctors at Balance My Hormones, where you can get just a simple advice call for only $59.95. Also, whilst you're watching the channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell so you get the latest content from Balance My Hormones. Until next time, this is Mike, and wishing you the best of health.